Hey guys, Brian Hewitt here, Stoke Review, IPCPR 2017, and I didn't mess that up. Here with you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Yes, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. How's it, how's it going? So this, you were the very first interview, so we're trying everything out new with oh. you. Yeah, so. All right. Great. Yeah. Glad to be a part of it. Good, good. The, the booth is looking pretty sharp. It, it looks Thank like you. it's considerably larger than a few of the ones I've seen in the previous what's, uh, what's the What's the story with the car? This is the classic Shelby Cobra. If it was original, I couldn't do this on it. But yeah. it's still a nice, uh, beautiful kit version of it. And basically, uh, retailers who buy uh, today at the uh, show or during the show are going to raffle off a uh, full day ride in it. They'll take it you know, for a full day whenever they're in Vegas next or at the end of the show, whenever they want. So that's pretty much it. But it also encompasses kind of what the, the idea of the brand is, just classic, uh, you know, a classic, even those American classic muscle car the bodies from England. You guys probably know the history on this, one of the most iconic cars. But, you know, it talks a little bit about the brand. We also have uh, our partners here, Cuervo Sobrinos. This is an uh, old uh, Cuban brand uh, that uh, Hemingway, Churchill, even Einstein owned at one point. Oh, really? if, you, if Americans are visiting Cuba, you can still see the old Cuervo and Sobrino uh, store down there. And the gentleman from Europe went down there, got the original uh, basically designs and kind of redid them and Swiss made really high end watch beautiful thing they sponsor the uh, world uh, smoking uh, championship here's Manuel he's from uh, Cuervo hey, Sobrinos actually uh, nice to meet you nice meeting you so uh, how did you guys get together on this uh, kind of partnership collaboration what have you well I've heard of the brand obviously being Cuban and the history of it but you know through mutual friends we really used up and, and the other nice part which I found interesting was that uh, Ernesto has a big picture of his father in Hemingway at the airport oh, yeah. in Cuba. And Hemingway owned the uh, Cuervo's watch when, you know, back in, in the day. And he was a frequent visitor to the shop, so I figured, it, you know, we had a little uh, synergy there. So uh, that, that's what we did. Plus, that we use the same color scheme, and we have a Cuban uh, background, so why not? It's great. It's great. Let's take a look at some cigars. What's sure. uh, what do you want to show us this this time well, around? Um, everything old is new again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, this is the uh, rebranded, kind of redesigned 32 in Padilla, Miami. Um, all the original blends, uh, using the same farm, same lots back from the day. Obviously, with federal regulation, all this going on, um, we were able now to change the packaging the counts have to stay the same the box counts and things like that yeah but um, as far as the tobacco still using agronorsa if you're familiar with it um, the same on the 32 and we had you know all the blend recipes and things like that so we did that we still have our vintage reserve box press and then um, over here we have something uh, something a little special something a little different here yeah look at this so, it's, uh, no, we didn't get it to wine, but it is a wine crate. It was made in California, and it's going to hold uh, 100 cigars, 100, box, 100 cigars and individual boxes inside. Um, basically, this cigar is something that I really set out to do really over a year ago. We really wanted to do something special with the factory. And you hear a lot of different things in our industry, age 300 million years. Well, at least that's uh, that's know, if it's only that's a show, right? Threat, so. so it's like a little frustrating because how do you put this? The essence of this cigar is really tobaccos that are on average ten to five years old, and it doesn't sound like with all the marketing that you hear these days, like oh yeah, well this guy's got twenty or thirty. But listen, it's an expensive box of cigars. It's four thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. So, well, how the hell wow. did you get you know that price? But to get the factory to part with certain bales that have been aged in what's called yagua, the royal palm bark, and oh, yeah, the seals yeah. uh, that he had there, is uh, something that is not easily done. It felt like a negotiation with Putin or something. I don't know. I think the Russians were behind it too. Uh, I think they rigged the. Uh, your right, they of rigged. Tobacco. That's right. Yeah. They rigged it. They rigged so, it. Um, no, but seriously, uh, really putting it out there. I mean, um, and. Give you a blend, you know, try it. Give it a minute. I hope you can try it when you get back to Atlanta. We got a little bit more humidity to yeah. really see. This is a full body, balanced, very sweet cigar. It's got a Viso wrapper, a higher priming wrapper. Um, 
grown in Tro Troyes, Honduras. It's just a proprietary wrapper grown uh, by the owner of Rice Cubanos Factory in Honduras. The inside is all our Aganorsa tobacco. Okay. Like I said, aged on an average of 10 to 5 years. It's got uh, Esteli and Jalapa, some Visos, which is, uh, you know, you got Lijero, Viso, and starts going down from there as far as the profile, the strength of the leaf. So, you know, it's a, I hate to use that word unique, but it really, it really is. I mean, you really want to try something that was different. So, even the band, I didn't, I didn't really mess with the band. I'm messing so much with the actual cigars that I almost thought even not putting a band on, which is kind of crazy for such an expensive cigar. But yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna come in uh, a Toro or Busto, a Figurado, a Churchill, and a double Toro. Which, you know, a little different for those that like some bigger ring. So, games. about what does it break down to per stick? It's uh, about like retail. We have about forty-seven dollars, well, with taxes or whatever. But it depends how retail, you know, you got a robusto and this, so it might be a little different. But oh, what, over ten years ago, we we launched the 1932 Oscuro in a humidor, forty-five count, and now those are selling in places like Casa Monte Cristo in Chicago uh, for about sixty dollars. Originally, they were thirty dollars. So I was like, wow. So bought a few of those to kind of see how that developed. Actually, the cigar is excellent if you get a chance. Uh, those, those blends have really It's been uh, a while stayed. since I had one, but I have had one, and it yeah. was very good, but that's been years. So yeah. I'm sure it's, 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 sure it's quite interesting recently. at this yeah, point. It's really yeah, it's really developed. I'm really surprised how it, it kept its strength more than anything. So in body and flavor, it was really a, a really great cigar. So, you know, the bar set pretty high. Yeah. Cigar Aficionado just rated 92, that other thing, you know, magazine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the connoisseur people. section. So the brand's been around for uh, over 14 years now. Yeah. So it was kind of weird to see it in the connoisseur section with, like, you know, old Dunhills and things like that. Uh, so it's a special... Uh, you know, as, as, as old as that original Oscuro is, yeah, it, it kind of belongs there. So that's kind of what they do. They're really, you yeah. know, really reserved, yeah. rare, yeah. well-aged yeah. stuff. So, yeah. If you can find it, I mean... I tried to talk some guy out of it, a local guy who had an entire uh, human entire humidor wow. of it. He, he would never sell it. I, I very seriously talked to him about it, and I don't know what happened if he wanted it, finally wanted to sell it to somebody else, or if he just decided he'd take wow. it home. But I haven't seen it in a long time. I have, I have a few. The Squirrel Ace, to me, a little better than the Miami. Yeah. Uh, Miami was an original, made, was in real cedar boxes that were made in Miami. So I picked up a lot of the cedar and the ones that I've tasted, but it was still a very good cigar. But it, it you know, the other ones that were in cellophane inside the humidor, to me, 32 aged a lot better. Yeah, they don't get to, uh, I, I've done that where I've let a cigar sit for several years on cedar. It gets really cedar. It gets really cedar. You gotta it's, like cedar exactly. a lot. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's too much. So I, yeah. if you have them, take them out, you know, right now in my opinion. Um, yeah. You know, so the Put bar is set pretty high. Yes, <laughs> hey, it works. So the bar is set pretty high on it, you know. But yes, we have a very expensive cigar. We got that. People are gonna go, I'm not buying no fucking fifty dollars. I better wash my car and take care of me. Yeah. Happy ending. Exactly. Happy ending indeed. So, yeah. Melissime. Melissime is a French word for great vintage, okay. which really wraps Melissime. up what it's about. Uh, you for, you are familiar with Yagua and Tercios and what? Yeah, what I done? actually saw that one on one of the tours where they okay. had the bun. The yes. Palm leaves. It wrapped yes. up. But yes. I hadn't seen it royal, before that. Royal bark palm. So That's what does how that do? To, what does that do to tobacco that makes a difference? That was the old way of aging uh, tobacco instead of these like you know cloth uh, bales and. Uh, I tried one where the tobaccos weren't in that, and I tried one with it. And it's not like it ferments any longer, you know? It does, there's no heat involved unless you, tobacco yeah. with heat starts breaking down and fermentation starts kicking in. But we're talking about the, it just keeps it beautiful. I mean, the, the moisture content, everything about that, uh, that bark just does something to it that I don't know the chemistry behind, to be honest with you. But it's, a, it's something that's solid. It's very expensive to do, very time consuming. We're yeah. talking about these bales on average at five years on them. Bales are a lot easier to construct, put together, take yes. apart, that sort of thing. And yeah. We're talking about uh, about 12,000 cigars. Okay. So that's that's a very pretty limited run. And then over here, we've got kind of really what I consider really the cigar smoker cigar. These cigars are the Padilla, San Andreas, Corojo, Criollo, uh, in Connecticut. They're, I know they're just simply named after the wrapper in them, even though the uh, fillers change up. But these cigars, uh, to me, are what I smoke on an everyday basis and what I would like to see in the shop. I mean, I smoke cigars, you know, forever, my dad, everybody. But, you know, an everyday cigar that's great for $7. And it's over here. This is a San Andreas, an average retail of 7 
to eight dollars. Same with the Criollo. We don't have the Corojo out here. Really great prices, really good cigars. Exactly. I, I, I've that's, had a number of all of these. So, so that's really what, you know, we've got different price points, uh, but this is to me like the core, the brand. Uh, maybe it's not as sexy as some of the other stuff, but um, if you're looking to try something that's really just a great, solid overall cigar, you're going to see it. Triple capped, entubado, you know, three turns on the leaf. You know, those are the details of construction that you look at in a cigar. And then, you know, beautifully uh, constructed stuff. Nicaraguan fillers, uh, San Andreas, Mexico wrapper on the San Andreas, obviously, Croyo Corojo, uh, some of it's grown in uh, Honduras, but primarily Nicaragua fillers. So. Great. So, well, thanks for taking right. a few Thank minutes you to so talk much. to us, sir. Hope you enjoy it. Basically, what, what we're exhibiting here, along with Ernesto, is the Cuervo Sobrino Cigar Lounge Collection. It's called the Habana 1882 Collection, which is the founding year of our company uh, in Havana. The watches are always Swiss made, have always been since the, the early 1930s, and this continued uh, with the revival of the brand. This, what we have here, is the watches in the collection. The, the dial on the watch is the texture of the tobacco leaf, and the, the strap is a very supple leather from an African antelope called Trudy. An African antelope? Okay. And they come in these um, uh, humidor boxes. It's an actual working humidor with Spanish cedar. You take this out, and you can. Yep. You got the humidor right there. It's an actual working humidor. No glue has been used in the humidor. They're all fitted pieces. Got right back there. And it's only available two cigar lounges. Two cigar lounges. Yes. Okay. This collection. We make an, another collection for for jewelry stores. Okay. Okay. And that's what's in the back. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time.